With the thousands of pop-up canvas trailers in use, there'll come a time when a new canvas may be in order. This week, we visit the country's leading producer of RV replacement canvas and see what's involved in turning your old, torn-up canvas into a new identical replacement. Later, Jeff Johnston takes us to a very interesting RV destination located in San Diego that the whole family will enjoy. Then, we join Mark and Don Polk from RV Education 101 as they show us an easy way to upgrade your RV kitchen. These stories and more on this week's Rolling On TV. Rolling On TV is brought to you by Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. Closed and Spanish captioning where available is sponsored by Jayco. At Jayco, we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. If your pop-up camping trailer looks like this and your wife and neighbors are complaining, then it's time to contact the folks at Canvas Replacements. This week we take you to Loyal, Wisconsin. You know, dairy country where they make all those great cheeses. But Loyal, Wisconsin is also home to Canvas Replacements, the leading manufacturer of pop-up tent camper canvas. I always wondered how someone can take an old canvas that looks like it came from the Civil War, all ripped and shredded, with pieces missing and turn out an exact replica using today's modern materials. Well, we'll show you. To learn more, we met with Bob Gramps, President and General Manager, and asked him just how Canvas Replacements got its start. We started in, in 1973 as a company. Um, we had bought out uh, a bunch of surplus materials from another camper company that went out of business in 1973 that was Tradewinds. Included in that inventory of miscellaneous hardware parts were a whole semi-trailer load of obsolete tent camper canvases. They were brand new canvases in bags that were for Tradewinds campers that had been made in 1963 and 64. And uh, my dad and I thought those were pretty worthless, but we hauled them back here with the rest of the stuff anyway. And after a few weeks, people were calling the office in, at Tradewinds and being directed to us to get a new tent for their 10-year-old Tradewinds camping trailer. Uh, it began to dawn on us, uh, God kind of beat it on my dad's head that this is kind of the direction you need to go. And over the next couple of years we started specializing in selling replacement tent camper canvases. It wasn't long until they started building their own canvas, as Bob goes on to explain. But more and more we started, we expanded our sewing operations and started making new tents from scratch for ones that we couldn't find a source on. And over the years, we have, uh, other companies have gone out of business and uh, we've just expanded on that. At this point, we can, we can make a new tent for, for any camping trailer. And we have for, I think, back to 1920-something cozy camp to uh, campers that were made in the, in the 2000s. That, uh, and all we need uh, at the at the most, all we would need would be the, the old uh, canvas that we're replacing. And we have a staff that can take that apart, measure it, even if it's a rag, and, uh, and duplicate it and make a new tent that fits perfectly. And is it necessary to send the old canvas into the company for a pattern? We have patterns uh, for many, many of them. I would say in the majority of cases, we do not need the old tent. Many times that's the best way to go to ensure a good fit, but uh, it's not always needed. We have patterns or sources for uh, uh, literally hundreds and hundreds of different models. We already have all the information on, on file that we need to make the new tent for them. What if we just needed a section of the old canvas replaced? Can that be done? Yeah, we need, we need the, uh, if you're replacing just a section of a, of a camper tent, we need 
more information so that we're able to match color and the zipper in particular where it zips to the rest of the tent. Different manufacturers use different sizes, brands, lengths of zipper and we want to be able to, if, if at all possible, to put the correct zipper on the new piece so that you will be able to zip it right to your tent without an without a issue or problem of tooth count or zipper size or whatever. And what about colors? We can make a new tent in, usually we try to stay fairly close to the original color uh, if that's possible, if it's available. If a customer would like a different color, a gray instead of a tan, uh, many times we can work that out with them. We do have uh, several colors of material in stock that we work with all the time. And if we know what color they want uh, or uh, they need a sample co of the colors that we have, we're happy to send that out and, and make it a different color if they like. We'll continue our visit to Canada's Replacement right after this word from our sponsors. Simply put, Thetford's AquaCam has outsold all its competitors combined because it's the strongest holding tank deodorant available. It provides the strongest odor control around the clock in all temperatures and conditions. It quickly liquefies waste and tissue and is 100% biodegradable. AquaCam, the industry standard for 50 years. For more information, visit Thetford.com. AquaCam, another great product from Thetford. We didn't make the majestic mountains, or the rugged terrain, or paint the night sky, but we make it possible to see it all. Road Trek, America's number one selling touring coach for over 25 years. Built with quality so you can sit back, relax, and enjoy the destinations you want. Enjoy the peace of mind that only a Road Trek can provide. Welcome back. As we saw earlier, there's a lot that goes into fabricating a brand new canvas for your tent trailer. And I'm still amazed at how that talented staff can virtually take a bunch of rags and meticulously measure and lay out an exact pattern for a new tent unit. Kind of reminds me of a museum restoring an artifact. I asked Bob to explain the various operations that go into making a new canvas replacement. When a customer sends an old tent in, uh, the first step uh, beyond writing up the order is to, have the, to spread the old tent out and take uh, measurements. I have um, an expert that uh, will measure everything out, uh, do sketches, make notes of how things need to be cut, what the finish sizes need to be. Uh, in some cases they do make a partial pattern of different uh, intricate parts uh, if, if necessary take the tent apart. To, to, so they know all the angles of each seam. And if, after that, the order goes to our cutting department. They cut the different pieces that are needed, the, the, uh, the window vinyls, the zippers, the, uh, the canvas flaps, the vinyl pieces, the roof panels. And then it goes through our sewing operation where the different pieces are put together in, in, into a unit and then the final cut down is done to make sure that the final dimensions will be correct for that camper. And then it's sewed together and put in a, inspected, put in a box and shipped to our customer. We're seeing more and more tinted vinyl windows lately. Is this becoming a standard or are clear windows still the norm? Vinyl windows that we use, we use a high quality um, 12 gauge, it's 12 thousandths thick, um, extra soft so it's it does not crack in cold weather and it's uh, normally we use a dark smoke tinted the dark smoke tinted vinyl windows started in popularity in the late 70s early 80s most companies use the dark smoke tinted in their new campers and we have that and it's what we use the most some companies like Coleman stuck with the clear vinyl windows and we do have that in stock also and it's customer's choice if they would prefer uh, more light we can use clear or if they would prefer the slightly additional privacy and a little more tinted we have the dark smoke tinted 
once we order our new canvas, what is the normal wait time before delivery? The lead time that we have in our shop for new orders is generally about four to six weeks. During the busiest seasons of the year, obviously that stretches out when we get orders in faster than they, in the one end faster than they go out the other end, that lead time can expand to about two months. We try and keep it at, at, at uh, 60 days or less. Uh, if we need to work a little overtime, if we need to add some extra people, we'll, we'll do that to try and uh, maintain at least uh, no more than a 60 day lead time. Do you recommend a dealer install the new canvas or is that something a trailer owner can do himself? Pop-up camping trailer owners are generally pretty resourceful. They understand their unit if it's one they've owned for a while. They understand how it goes up and down, how the canvas tucks in, and, and uh, if they've had to remove their old tent to send it to us for uh, patterning purposes, they're pretty familiar with how it goes in. So I would say most people can install their own. We're happy to advise them on that. We enclose with a new tent some generalized instructions on what they need to uh, do to install the new tent and get a good fit on it. Um, it's a lot of a lot of people do like to have it professionally installed, and in that case, they can take it to any number of RV or tent awning shops that would be happy to help them with it. Uh, they can order it through any RV dealer or tent awning shop, and uh, we'll be happy to ship it directly to their uh, dealer. With a new canvas, is it recommended that any water repellent or seal it be put on it? A new tent from Canvas Replacements is already water proofed on the at the factories I mean the, the materials we use are all water repellent uh, when we get them we do not recommend putting on uh, canvac uh, scotch guard or anything like that when it's new it's not needed um, and for we don't recommend it rewaterproofing until symptoms of leakage may show up in five or ten years if the waterproofing is wearing out and the canvas is starting to get uh, wet spots on it that are soaking through, then it's a good time to uh, probably put on a quality dry water repellent treatment. Uh, we sell uh, IOSO brand products that are good for that. They have an excellent waterproof water repellent uh, spray that it is easy for the consumer to apply to uh, fabric, canvas and such. Uh, we also stock a complete line of uh, seam sealers and other things that may or may not be necessary over the years for maintaining your canvas. Bob's very proud of his employees with most of them being there for many years. But there's one special person Bob leans on most for inspiration and direction. My father who, uh, who founded this company is uh, just turned 95 this summer and he is in fair health and he's in the office just about every day, uh, looking over my shoulder, making sure that I do things right, opening the mail for me. And uh, he's, he's been, uh, he is a member of the RV Hall of Fame and has been around this industry for over 60 years. Back in the early 50s, my dad built a home-built camping trailer for our family to use, and that camper, led to him because people saw that camper and really liked it and wanted one like it. He started building pop-up camping trailers uh, called Easy Camper in 1957 in Loyal, Wisconsin. The original camper that he built for our family has been fully restored and is on display at the RV Hall of Fame Museum in Elkhart, Indiana. My, my granddaughter and I built a model of that camper for a high school project for her and, we get, and she gave it to my dad for his birthday about four years ago. And it's on display here at, at our office. For additional information on Canvas Replacements, be sure to visit their website at canvasreplacements.com. Coming up, we'll join Jeff and Pam as they visit an interesting RV destination the USS Midway Museum in San Diego, California. But first, a word from our sponsors. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, 
visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. Never run out of propane again. With Level Check, there's no more guesswork. Just run the gauge over the tank, and when the light turns from red to green, you'll know exactly how much propane you have left. It's that simple. Level Check, another great product from Truma. For more information, visit levelcheck.com. Roll on TV and Thetford are giving away six LX Model Smart Tote 2s, one each week for six weeks starting July 1st. To enter, just visit our website at rollingontv.com and click on the Smart Tote 2 LX contest page and sign up for the drawings. Now, isn't that simple? Visitors to the San Diego, California waterfront find it's hard to miss the aircraft carrier Midway Museum. The 1,000 foot long ship cuts an impressive figure. The USS Midway is a must see destination that teaches visitors about an important piece of naval and aviation history. An oversized statue depicting the famous sailor kissing photo highlights the dock adjacent to the ship and is a popular photo spot for visitors. Visitors can do a self-guided tour or follow along with one of the many docents who describe the ship's features and operation in detail. Right now we're standing on the hangar deck of the USS Midway. That's CV-41. Uh, it was one of the first carriers to have uh, a steel flight deck. Now this was commissioned September the 10th, 45. So when it's, a, it's based, it's set in San Diego and you can walk aboard, you walk into the hangar bay and this is the hangar bay here. And down here we have mainly World War II airplanes. We're open every day except uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. It's uh, pretty, pretty well open. Anyway, uh, also you're able to go down here, and I don't know if you can see that yellow airplane down there, but uh, if you go down there, you go down to the second deck. That's where the galley is. That's where the, the wa officer's wardroom are, enlisted uh, messing. Also the chapel, and also sick bay and dental. Uh, and the brig. To do a complete tour of the Midway is, probably four to five hours. So uh, come early and uh, wear good shoes. Aircraft cockpit displays encourage visitors to climb in, take a seat and see how it feels. In addition to the historic displays, visitors can enjoy having themselves flung about by the aircraft simulators. The decorations at the museum snack bar are impressive. Down several flights of stairs, among other views, you get to see part of the crew quarters and the engine room. You're in number three engine room. Midway has four of these engines. Everything in this room is one big engine. We have a high pressure turbine and a low pressure turbine for each engine. You got a total of 53,000 horsepower per engine. There's a total of, for the all four engines together, 212,000 shaft horsepower, and that'll push the ship at up to about 33 knots, which you do the math, it comes out to almost 40 miles per hour. A wide range of aircraft and equipment is housed on its more than four acre flight deck. Okay, we're standing on the flight deck of USS Midway, and this is where flight operations generally uh, uh, take place, and this is the busiest part of an aircraft carrier when we're operating. And if you look around, you can see a wide variety of airplanes that the majority of which operated off Midway at one time or another. We have all the modern tactical aircraft carrier 
going down on which would be the left or the port side of the ship and we have several other older types of airplanes that are on the starboard or the right side of the ship. They all have placards that explain the full details, their capabilities, when they were in service, who built them, pretty interesting stuff. You can't help but be humbled and impressed by all the crew of 4,500 people did on this ship during its active career. We've only scratched the surface of what the museum has to offer. Plan on spending at least three or four hours touring the Midway, and even more if you choose to linger a while longer. For more information about the Midway Museum, log on to our website at rollingontv.com. At Jayco, we're a lot more than just an RV manufacturer. We're all about family. And we've been making family dreams come true since 1968. To see our complete product line and find your nearest Jayco dealer, visit us online at jayco.com or just log on to rollingontv.com. You have a Truma Aquago instant hot water system. You can expect to make a lot of new friends. Hi, I'm Mark Polk with RV Education 101. When your RV gets a little aged, there are lots of simple and inexpensive and fun upgrades you can make to keep it looking new and up to date. I attend lots of RV shows and something I really like is the look of a tile backsplash behind the kitchen countertops in an RV. I've done some tile work in the past, but for this upgrade I found a product that eliminates cutting the tile, using adhesive, messing with grout, and the added weight of real tile. It's a peel and stick tile product that's available at home improvement stores like Lowe's and Home Depot. Let's install some peel and stick tile right now. The first step is to measure the surface area you plan to cover with tile. Ours is approximately 10 feet by 2 feet, so we need enough peel and stick tile to cover 20 square feet of surface area. Check the coverage area on the tile product and do the math to make sure you get enough tile for your project. There are lots of different color shapes and designs available, so you can select one that complements the area you are working on. I always say the key to a good finished product is the preparation and planning that goes into the job. In this case, prepping the surface area will pay big dividends in the final product. Make sure any power going to the RV is turned off and remove any outlet or light switch covers from the area you'll be working in. I use a scuff pad like this to scuff the surface so the tile would adhere properly. Next, clean the surface area with a wet sponge or rag and a degreasing agent and let dry. Normally when you're working on a tile project, you start in the middle of the surface area and work your way out to the edges. But with this peel and stick brand tile, the way the overlap is designed, I need to start on one of the edges and work my way across the project area. I am using the top molding of the countertop and the door edge as my border and my straight edge. If you can apply a full sheet of tile, simply remove the backing material and carefully set it in place. If cutting is necessary, get your measurements and cut the tile on a smooth flat surface using scissors or a box cutter with a sharp blade. A quick and easy way to figure out how to cut the peel and stick tile where there's curves or multiple cuts involved is just take the backing surface off one of the peel and stick tiles put it up exactly where it's going to be placed, draw a pattern, and then sketch that pattern on one of the tiles and make your cuts. Adding a tile backsplash to your RV is a fun project and a simple design solution to update the look of your RV. You can add this peel and stick tile to your RV kitchen, bathroom, or wherever you like. So what are you waiting for? Take some measurements, get some peel and stick tile, and get started on your own RV upgrade project today. Happy camping. We hope you enjoyed this week's program. 
And for more information on anything you saw on the show, along with additional videos and stories from current and past shows, visit our website at rollingontv.com. You can also join us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest. As usual, this has been another fun production.